I'm curious because you worked on dogs eating dogs and the narrative for some reason is that things maybe weren't so cohesive. Chris Holmes said that, you know, everybody was working out of their own studios, which at the time maybe was a tad weird, but really in today's world, that's, that's how it's done. Maybe Blink was just ahead of their time. I'm curious when you see Blink, this version of it, that seems like super happy, motivated, rekindled friendships, is it any different right away than 2012 dogs eating dog sessions or from your viewpoint, not so much? Here's my take. And this is coming from a person who's started as a Blink fan in San Diego, like saw them at Soma in the mm. 90s, like before they were what they, you know, the monster that they turned into. And it always felt to me that neighborhoods and dogs eating dogs was like a plus 44 angels and airwaves compilation yeah that's fair you'd have songs that what tom was writing at the time could have been angels and airwaves stuff what mark was writing at the time could have been uh plus 44 like totally it, it didn't have that that coat like what blink to me was then going into the skiba years it felt like the same thing um except there was no more of the angels and airwaves type yeah um situation um this time around i think they got into the room and i think they're all very aware of the importance of each member in that band Mm. it wasn't a matter of like well we could do it without you we don't need you you know you're replaceable all of that was out the window it was like we are three cogs in one machine and without one of us it's not blink 182 Mm. and so i think at that point and how things had kind of come more from a place of friendship and wanting to move forward on making a record and not just necessarily having to make something because there was a tour or whatever. Um, I, I think that it came from this genuine place of the three guys got in a room, they wrote three songs, and immediately, whether it sounded good or not, it sounded like Blink straight mm-hmm. off the bat i was like whoa this is now we're talking like this is what was missing and that's kind of my take on the whole situation and yeah i think people have to grow up and kind of realize maybe i'm not the i felt like they all thought that they were the reason why blink was big mm. <laughs> That that that's what I think, and it could be far from the truth, but I, I think that each one of them felt that whatever they brought to the table was the reason Blink was Blink. But I think they've realized that Blink is Blink because they're those three guys, and they're three distinct people. Like three, I mean, Mark and Tom's voice are polar opposites. Yeah. Polar, polar opposites. And I kind of miss that dichotomy when when Skiba was in it. And I love Alkaline Trio. Like, loved for decades already. And, but it just didn't feel the same. It kind of just, I kind of felt like Skiba and Mark were very close, very similar in, in, tonal and melodies and tonal range and whatnot yeah i you know what's crazy to think about i think you are probably the only person in the planet that can speak to this you have basically a decade of tom alan yourself a lot of times probably just you and tom in a studio 
and also have that with Blink and seeing him working with Mark and Travis. Is there something special that when you just get those three in a room, you just can't replace it? I mean, is it just a feel? Do you just see it when you're in there with them? It's it's not necessarily like some magic. I mean, there there is that that back and forth between Mark and Tom. It's like what you see on stage is what you see. Like yeah. <laughs> where, wherever they are, like they have that 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 rapport where they're just always riffing off of each other and trying to say outlandish things to make each other laugh and. That was definitely fun to see, but um, but yeah, I mean, I the the big difference I think was is that Tom was the final say in Angels and Airwaves, mm. and any project that I'd work on with him, like end all be all final call is going to be made by Tom. In the Blink situation, it was like, hey, they're going to take some of my ideas. They're going to not take some of my ideas. And whatever makes each song better, that's where it's going to end up. Mm. And um, that's kind of the the situation you know the, the big difference is that it wasn't you know we we would work on stuff and there are times where i'd get something back and they completely took out something we had worked on that i loved and i'd be like oh man really like <laughs> that was your baby that was your big moment on the album <laughs> yeah but you know you you're part of a team like in this in this project and it was good. There was a semblance of relief because end of the day, it doesn't fall on my shoulders. Yeah. And if something, like I always feel like when you're producing a record, it's, everything's going to end up on your plate until it's done. Yeah. Um. And with this album, you know, we would turn in stuff, get stuff done. And that final say ended up being Travis. 